Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. Come on. How great. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great our God. is our God. Oh, we'll see how great. How great is our God. Come on. How great.
Amen. I know what a lot of people have said, COVID is over, but we're not taking that chance yet. So well, I'm on altar call. just want everybody to stand where you're at. God gives us a little sense to have, if we still got to be safe. That's right. Let us pray. This morning, my Heavenly Father, once again, we want to just say thank you, my Heavenly Father. Thank you for being the God that you are, my Heavenly Father. You woke us all up this morning, my Heavenly Father. Once again, we'll just say thank you. My Heavenly Father, we just want you to continue to bless the ones that's locked up in the jail cells, that's in the hospitals, in the nursing home. My Heavenly Father, just continue to bless. And bless us all, my Heavenly Father. We can't say thank you enough, but just thank you. It's somehow or another you just always do whatever you're going to do to help us out. And we want to say thank you for it, my Heavenly Father. Because we can only be better because of you, my Heavenly Father. It's all about you. Continue to give us the strength and the guidance to go on every day, my Heavenly Father. My Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to continue to bless our pastor, his family, my Heavenly Father. Just continue to bless us also, my Heavenly Father. Because we all need you, my Heavenly Father. I can't say it enough, but just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just doing everything you're doing for us, my Heavenly Father. We know it's all about you, my Heavenly Father. Just continue to give us the strength and guidance to go on a little further and bless you the way we need to bless you. And this we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Say that ghost 
God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. He is still performing miracles, and we ought to give him praise. We thank God for the opportunity to assemble in the house of prayer once again. Amen. We say good morning to you, Greater Rose of Sharon, and to those of you that are tuning in via Facebook Live. We praise God for you on today. Amen. We have had a blessed time this morning already. Amen. Once again, prayer meeting at 8.15 this morning. Amen. Sunday school was on fire this morning. Amen. And the spirit of the living God is present in this place right now. Amen. So we thank God for everything being as well as it is. Um, we're, we're going to uh, move along in the service. I don't have very much to uh, put out this morning. I want to say praise God that one of our members who has been on the sick and shut-in list is here with us this morning, Sister Shirley Wright. Amen. So we praise God for you on today. Amen. So good to see you in the house of prayer. Amen. Uh, let's be praying for our youth. Um, school is almost out. Not, not quite, but school is almost out. And there are a lot of fights going on in school. I, I, I have a middle schooler, I have a high schoolers, and I get, I get the reports, you know, of what happened at school today. And there's so much happening with our young people. 
uh, just like we see the violence in the neighborhood and on the news, is going on in our schools as well. So we need to pray for a covering over them. And we need to pray for the teachers and administrators. It's, it is, it is sin, sin is still prevalent in the land. But as we all know, God is still in control of all things. Amen. So let's be praying for our young people. Pray that God will keep them safe and we can finish this school year out strong. Amen. Uh, we also want to be praying for our city. Uh, Little Rock is, is still hot right now. Um, people are still dying. I believe if last night, uh, the night before last, one or two more homicides in the city. Um, and for those of you who don't live in the South End, over here where Rosa Sharon is located, there's gunfire all the time. <laughs> and there are some things that don't make the news. Amen. So we want to be praying. It is so much going on in the world right now. But God has not lost his power. And he has not been dethroned. He is still in control. And we just want to put things in God's hand and watch and see how God will continue to work and his will will be accomplished. Amen. So at this time, we're going to move a little higher in the service. And we're going to worship through giving. Amen. How many of you are happy to have something to give? Amen. So at this time, we are going to yield the floor over to our ushers. What time is it? It's giving time. And God tells us why we should give and how we should give. In Malachi 3 and 10, God tells us to bring the tithe to the storehouse that his house may have meat. Simply put, that means pay your tithes to support the church. And when you support the church, you're not only helping the church, but you're helping others through the church ministries. Not only that, you will be blessed. For God also say in Malachi 3 and 10 that if you give the way he say give, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Don't you want to see the church blessed? Don't you want to be blessed? You can accomplish both by giving. Now to give to this great ministry, simply download the Givelify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create that account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Give the Fire app, you can mail your tithes, your offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon, Missionary Baptist Church, 2823, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying God bless you and keep you is my prayer. of my own but it's the hand of the Lord that's upon me it's no goodness of my own but it's the hand of the Lord that's upon me it's no goodness it's no goodness of my own hand of the Lord
upon me. Oh, it's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. Oh, 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 oh. it's the hand of the Lord that's upon me. Oh, 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 I know it's hand, I know it's hand, hand. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, I know it is the man's hand. I know it's hand, I know it's hand, I know it's hand, hand. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, I know it is the man's hand. I know it's hand, I know it's hand.
on her knees in the old days uh, that you Amazing grace. Thank you, Jesus. And the rain. Yes, yes, yes. How, how sweet the sound. you lift your hands for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He is worthy of all of our praise. He is a awesome God. Mighty God. There's none like him. He is the only wise God, and we give him praise, honor, and worship. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come now in the matchless name of Jesus, your Christ. First, Lord, we just tell you thank you. We thank you for being God and being God alone. Then, Master, we ask for forgiveness of our sins and our shortcomings. Yes. And then, Lord God, as I stand to proclaim your good news on this day, yes. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would set me down and you stand up. Yes. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would hide me behind the shadow of Calvary's cross. Yes. And pray, Heavenly Father, that your word would fall on good ground on this day. Yes. And if there be a sin in the midst or even watching via the Internet, we pray that hearts be pricked and lives be changed. Yes. Lord, we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you will do. Lord, it's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Once again, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. 
This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I have to say again to Sister Jackson, thank you. Praise God for you and amazing grace. Amen. Amen. Listen, let's not forget that it was because of his grace. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, we're not saved because of works. Right. Yeah. We're not saved because we are so good or so kind. Yeah. It was because of his amazing grace. Yeah. And if you get to a point, don't ever get to a point where you forget that grace is amazing. <laughs> That's a fitting title to the song because his grace is amazing. <laughs> and thank God for grace. Amen. Amen. We will be in our the gospel according to Matthew this morning. Yeah. Matthew chapter number 28. And we're going to be in looking at verse 16 through 20. Amen. Matthew yeah. 28, 16 through 20. I ask for your prayers this morning. Uh, I'm a little congested, but uh, that's not enough to stop from preaching. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Also, um, just want to ask you all uh, again for your prayers. We know that yesterday uh, was one year since Mama Jean went on to be with the Lord. So y'all say a prayer for us. Amen. Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 16. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. Let the church say all power. all power. All power is given unto me in yeah. heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore yeah. and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, yeah. even unto the end of the world. Amen. Hey Amen. I want to talk this morning about the final order. Yeah. Yeah. The final yeah. order. Let's all say amen. amen. My prayer this morning, brothers and sisters, is that we remain as enthusiastic about Easter yeah. after Easter. Sometimes we, once we celebrate Resurrection Sunday, we roll right into business as usual. <laughs> well, listen, if we were fired up about the Lord yeah. on Resurrection Sunday, uh, we should be fired up about the Lord on every Sunday. Yeah. And someone mentioned uh, that Easter Sunday is the Super Bowl for All Christians. Right. Well, listen, uh, after the Super Bowl, that begins the off-season. <laughs> well, we don't want to have an off-season. <laughs> uh, we still ought to be excited about Christ. And there are many events that took place after the resurrection of Christ. And in our text this morning, we have come to what I call Christ giving his final orders. Yeah. Uh, what we know as the Great Commission. Yeah. For all of us that have served on active duty, this is the commander in Christ, yeah. uh, not the commander in chief. We know yeah. the president is the commander in chief, but mm -hmm. the commander in Christ is giving his final direct order. And Matthew started his gospel uh, by talking about him as the promised king. Mm -hmm. And now he closes his writing proclaiming that Jesus has all power and authority. 
Verse 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubt. Now, on the night of his arrest, Jesus told his disciples mm -hmm. that he would rise from the dead and meet them in Galilee. This is in Matthew chapter 26, verse 32. Yeah. And our passage shows the fulfillment of that promise. Yeah. And there are so many illustrations that we can give of scripture being fulfilled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is why, brothers and sisters, that in this everyday walk of life, we must remember that everything the Bible has said would happen yeah. thus far has happened. Amen. Amen. So as believers, we can stand on his promises. Sometimes we get a little caught up in the situations we're in. And sometimes it's almost like we forget God's in control. But if we could just remember to cast our cares on him, because we know that he cares for us. Amen. We can remember that he said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And if we can stand on what he has already said, that will give us hope as we deal with the problems, cares, and concerns of this walk of life. Yeah. But in the, there's something interesting in verse number 17. It says, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, yeah. but some doubted. Now, y'all bear with me because I, I need to spend a little time in verse 17. Yeah. But the text says, and when they mm -hmm. saw him. Mm -hmm. Now, our first thought is we're thinking of the 11 because it says in verse 16, then the 11 disciples went away to Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Now, in verse 17, it says, is when, and when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Now, I had to wrestle with this. This isn't the first time I've read this passage, and however many years ago, I wrestled with it then. And I'm wondering, how is it that it just talked about the 11 in verse 16, it said in verse 17, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So how is it that you worship him, but then some doubted? Mm -hmm. And when I looked up uh, the definition of the word doubt, doubt means a feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. Mm -hmm. But now the Greek word for doubt is distazo, and it means the doubt exhibited here in this text is not unbelief, but more like hesitation or amazement. Mm -hmm. So the disciples, All right. they didn't doubt because they're, this was not the first encounter with Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. They've seen him since his resurrection mm -hmm. prior to where we are in the text. Mm -hmm. So they knew he was alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to keep in mind, y'all, they did see him on the cross. Yes, sir. They did see him die. Uh -huh. They did see him taken down off of the cross. Make it plain. And for him to be alive mm -hmm. after death, even though he told them it would happen, it's amazing, though. It's, it still threw him off. <laughs> it was amazing to see the Lord risen because keep in mind, they, they saw what he looked like on the cross. Yeah. But he did not come out of the grave with, oh, with wounds on him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He did not come out of the grave with scars on him. Yes, sir. So to see the risen Savior, mm -hmm. they were more amazed. They didn't doubt it was him because this yeah. was not their first encounter. Mm -hmm. But it gets deeper than that. It says, and some doubt it. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 6, he talks about how he was seen by over 500 believers at one time. Yeah. The text tells us, verse 17, and when they saw him, they, they worshipped him, 
but some doubted. Yeah. So it, it was not just the 11 All right. that were present. They makes up the, the 500 that Paul talked about right. in 1 Corinthians. Someone may wonder, well, why, why didn't Matthew mention it in his gospel? Well, we don't know why Matthew didn't mention it. But he was seen by over 500 believers. Now, out of the 500, they were not all present at the foot of the cross. So for them to see the risen Savior, yeah. some doubt it. Yes, sir. Because let's put ourselves in the text right now. Okay. Let's say we were present mm -hmm. and we saw Christ carrying that cross. Yeah. Let's say we saw him in the condition he was in when they nailed him to the cross. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Even though he told us that on the third day he would rise again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people can tell you something and it just kind of goes in one ear and out the other. Yes, sir. Sometimes people can tell you something and you can forget it. Sometimes people tell you something and you weren't paying attention at all in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to have missed what Christ was saying. Yes, sir. But to see him on the third day, yeah. that would have all blown right. all of our minds. Thank you. Especially seeing the condition he was yeah. on the cross. And now we see that he has shown himself to over 500 believers, and some of them doubted. So it really wasn't so much so that they doubted that it happened because, listen, he was alive. You're looking right at him. Yeah. But they were amazed. Mm -hmm. And what we must understand, brothers and sisters, that's why I mentioned about amazing grace. We've been saved so long, sometimes we overlook the fact that grace is amazing. Yeah. Sometimes we overlook the fact that we woke up this yes, morning sir. and it wasn't anything to do with something we did. Yes, sir. We were able to open our eyes this morning because of the grace of God. Yes, sir. We had the strength to get out of bed this morning because of the grace of God. Yes, sir. We were able to Make it to the house of prayer because of the grace of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. And sometimes we get caught up in the routine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just believe, brothers and sisters, sometimes we need to pause long enough to still be amazed at what God does. Y'all yeah. yeah, should have given them a better amen than that. Yeah. Listen, listen, we ought to still be amazed yeah. at what God does and how he does it. Yeah. So, the, so let's not be so hard on those who witnessed Christ, yeah. and they were just in shock and awe. Yeah. Because keep in mind, it wasn't but a few days, a few weeks from where we are in the text. It, it wasn't very long that ago that he was dead on the cross. Yes, yeah. But now he's alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can see in the text, based on what the word doubt meant in the Greek, mm -hmm. because what the word doubt in English translation is different from what it meant in the Hebrew and Greek. Right. Right. So their doubt was not the fact that uh, they had a lack of conviction. Mm -hmm. Their doubt was more of an amazement, and they were in awe to see their risen Savior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when we get to the point where we are no longer in awe of him, oh, boy. listen, we it's like trying to cut with a dull knife. Listen, we are our amazement at what the Lord has done for us. That's why I say we want to keep our enthusiasm yeah. from Resurrection Sunday. That ought to be the same every Sunday. Yeah. Because the fact that every soul in this room yeah. was on, we were on our way to a devil's hell. Yeah. But the Lord saw fit uh -huh. to send his only begotten son. And the Bible says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, that's why I just believe God didn't gift me with the pump and prime type of spirit. Some preacher will try to fire you up, hype you up. They'll run, jump to get a re reaction out of the people. But listen, I don't do all that. Because if you're not excited about Christ, there's nothing I can do to get you fired up. Because, listen, matter of fact, in the event that I could get you fired up, I got to keep acting like a clown to keep you fired up. 
But when you think about how good God has been, when you think about how the Lord sustained and kept you in times when you were uh, just in a, in, a, in a down season, when you think about that hospital visit mm -hmm. and, the, and the doctor's words made you a little nervous, but yet you're still here. When you think about all of the things that the Lord has done and allowed you to see all another right. day, listen, we ought to be fired up about our Lord and Savior. The Lord has done something that has blown all of our minds. And sometimes we just don't know what to say. Listen, I, I remember hearing Deacon pray this morning. Lord, I, I just really don't know what to say. Listen, sometimes it's like that. <laughs> but when you think about how good God has been, we ought to have a hallelujah in our spirit. These disciples... They were overcome with emotion when Jesus appeared to them in Galilee. And some of them were just unsure how to react. Now, they didn't doubt that he had risen from the dead. But you got to keep in mind, the events surrounding the death, burial, and resurrection was something heavy on the disciples. Mm -hmm. But even though time was tough, and they had to press on without the presence of their Lord and Savior. He always gave them strength. And we'll see that later on in the text. So I'm verse, verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, mm -hmm. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. It says, All power. Yeah. Let the church say, All power. All power. reason I'm asking you to say that, because you know, Sometimes we have to speak and, and verbalize for things to internalize. Christ has all power. Every person in this room has something pressing going on in your life right now. Everyone has a list of things on their prayer request for God. Some of us are looking at what's going on in Little Rock. Some are looking at what's going on in the Ukraine. And some are wondering if God is really still in control. All right, all right. But the text says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Now, it's not hard for us to wrap our minds around him having all power in heaven. Yeah, yeah. But the text says that he has all power in heaven and in earth. God is still in control. Yeah. That sounds cliche. We're familiar with to hear that. Yeah. People say it all the time. Well, God's in control. Yeah. God's in control. No, but the truth of the matter is God is in control. Yeah. Think about it this way. There's been times where you've been driving your vehicle. Maybe in raining conditions. Or maybe there's ice on the road. And you're operating your vehicle. There have been times you you all over the line. Close to hitting the medium, sometimes you may be driving, drifting over in another lane. But as long as you hold on to that steering wheel, yeah. the vehicle may be going. Yeah. It may seem like you're out of control. Yeah. But as long as you have the steering wheel, yeah. it may take a minute to stabilize. But as long as you have the steering wheel, you are in control. Yes, so when you look at the events taking place in the world, yeah. mm -hmm. it may appear that things are out of control. Uh -huh. But as long as the Lord has the wheel, yes, and y'all know we will say it, Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. As long as he has the wheel, uh, yeah. everything is in control. And we've got to learn to trust him, y'all. Yeah. Listen, he, didn't, he never said this walk would be easy. But if we want to think about the promises of God, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know, we would be all right with him just never leaving us. But he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Listen, on the way in this morning, there was a preacher on the radio 
and he just happened to be preaching yeah. about the three Hebrew boys. Yeah. And nothing in the text, if you're familiar with what happened in Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, listen, there's nothing in there that says that, the, that they would avoid being thrown into the fiery furnace. No, no. Read the story. It's there. All they were doing was being obedient to God. They did not bow down to a golden image, and as a result of being obedient to God, they were thrown in the fiery right. furnace. Right. Somebody may wonder, well, why didn't, the, why didn't God intervene? Why, why didn't God show up before the fiery furnace? Well, listen, if it would have happened that way, we would not have the testimony of Nebuchadnezzar jumping up saying, now, now, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Didn't we throw three in? Yes, sir. But I see a fourth man. And he looked like the son of God. We wouldn't hear the story of how they were brought out of the fiery furnace. And it says that their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Not a hair on their head was singed. They were thrown in the fire. And the problem is that we don't want to get thrown into the fire. We want God to intervene before oh, the storm that. happens. Well, listen, you wouldn't be able to have, share your testimony yes, sir. Yes, sir. of being thrown in the fire yes, and coming out not smelling like smoke. Oh, See, listen, God takes us through things, uh -huh. yeah. number one, so that he can get the glory. Yes, but then many times he's showing us uh -huh. that he's the one in control. Yes, sir. Then he'll show us, because watch this, there's somebody that is watching you, yes. and they know what you're going through. Yes, and they're just waiting uh, to see when you're going to give up. But when you keep on pressing, yes, when you keep on praising, yeah, when you keep on serving, yes, God gets the glory out of your yes. life, and somebody that's ready to give up yes. will see you continue to press your way. Yes, God works in mysterious ways. I've had several of my pastor friends ask me. Yeah. I told you yesterday would be one year wow. since mama passed. I've had pastor friends ask me, Cross, how did you preach your mama's eulogy? Yeah. And I told them, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I did it. How do you preach your mother's eulogy on Mother's Day weekend? I don't know. Only the power of God. That's why I say, don't you sleep on his grace being amazing. There are times when we, it was only by the power of God that we were able to put one foot in front of the other. And we cannot sleep on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He is active in our lives. Listen. Now, let, me, let me get back to the text. Let me get back. Verse 18, it says, And Jesus came, yeah. spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. After his resurrection, he assures his followers mm -hmm. that he has all power. With so many false gods, idol gods, false Christ, yeah. he has been given all power that we may exalt his name above every name. Paul said it best in Philippians 2 and 8. And being found in appearance as a man. Now, I hope y'all shout when you're supposed to shout. I'm going to read it for you, and I'm going to see if you know when to shout. It says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, yeah. even the death of the cross. Yeah. Verse 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him. Uh -huh. I'm giving y'all time to catch up. And given him the name which is above every name. Verse 10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, <clears throat> and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> Listen, 
no matter what we deal with in this walk. Yeah. Christ assures his followers. And it was not just for those that were present All right. That's right. where we are in the text. This is for them that were there and for you and I. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And as a child of God, listen, we talked about the promise of the Holy Spirit. We talked about him last week. And every believer, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. It may be hard for your mind to, to conceive it. It may be hard to wrap your brain around it, but the text does not lie. Amen. If you have received him as your Lord and Savior, we have the gift of the eternal life yes. and the presence of the Spirit of God living on the inside of us. Right. Now, you may not feel it, but this ain't about feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, feelings come and go. Right. <laughs> but his indwelling presence in every believer, listen, some of y'all should have been in Sunday school this morning because yeah. we dealt with it. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to come in, but, so I'm going to do it now. Listen, yeah. when, when, we were in, when we were in the world, yeah. listen, nothing restrained us. We did what we want. Yeah. We went where we went. Yeah. Said what we wanted to say. We, yeah. we, 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 we lived the way we wanted to live because right. there was nothing restraining us from doing anything and everything that we wanted to do. Yeah. All right. But once we surrendered our life to the Lord yeah. and the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. yeah. took up residence on the inside of us, that time we snapped on somebody yeah. and then went back and apologized. Yeah. That was the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. That time we were about to smack the fire to somebody. Yes. And you didn't. Yeah, yeah. That was the ministry of the Holy Spirit. All right, that time where you saw somebody drop their purse and you was going to pick it up, go around the corner, yeah. see what was in it. Listen, but you chose to pick it up, find the person and give it back to them. Right. That was the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't sleep on the ministry right. of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And when we think about the gift, he's a gift. Now, see, God didn't just give us the word of God right. without the spirit of God to help us understand the yeah. word. He was so kind that he not only left what he chose to leave on record, but he gave us the teacher. Yeah. Yes, sir. And if we would allow the ministry of the Holy Spirit, if we would allow him to lead us and guide yeah. us. Yeah. Listen, every one of us, every one of us, you don't have to say, man, you don't have to raise your hand. Right. Every one of, of us have had something. That we were tempted to say, tempted to do. And I ain't, I'm not talking 10 years ago. I'm talking Sunday morning before you got here. So listen, the enemy will never cease to go to work. As a matter of fact, it's just biblical, him doing his job. But if it had not been for the Holy Spirit, some of us would still be in bed right now. We wouldn't be in church. Some of us are making plans for what we're going to do this evening because, listen, it was brought out in the Sunday school lesson that there are times where we planned on sinning. Yeah. Yeah. It was brought out in the Sunday school lesson that we enjoyed sinning. Yeah. See, some of, all, some of you all would find that as blasphemous for he, to hear somebody say that we enjoyed sin. Listen, just be real about it. Everything that you did in the world, you enjoyed it. Don't act too holy now, okay? Yeah, you, when you did what you did, you enjoyed every yeah. bit of it. And the truth be told, and you sure ain't going to say amen now. Listen, you still enjoy it if the opportunity presented itself. But because of the ministry of the Holy Ghost, he is the one that keeps us from going further than we should go, from doing more than we should do. That's why we should thank God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Matthew says in verse number 19, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And we must understand that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we got to understand this. When we talk about he has all power, Christ, through the power of the Spirit. Y'all don't miss this. He has the power yeah. to destroy any stronghold. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I know personally 
some of you in this room and what the Lord had delivered you from. The mere fact that some of us were, were strung out. It may not have been drugs or alcohol, but we were strung out on something. And it was nothing within our own strength that brought us back to our senses. He has all power. I don't want you to think, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who this is for. But whatever it is you're dealing with, there's nothing in this world that is more powerful than the Lord. And don't you allow Satan to trick you into thinking that you cannot be set free. Don't you allow Satan to trick you into thinking that your situation will never change. Don't you allow Satan to trick you into thinking that you must continue to walk in depression and continue to walk in heartache and pain. Don't allow Satan to trick you into thinking that your situation will never change. And here's the trick of the enemy. Some feel like because you've been saved this long, Uh that this should should no longer be an issue. Uh Somebody feels, because Satan is crafty. There are some things you dealt with as a young believer, Uh only to find out that you still have some issues as a seasoned believer. And Satan will try to convince you as long as you've been serving God, yeah. you still got this problem. Yeah. And now you're wondering, can God really fix it? You, 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 you're wondering if God can really make a way. Because, see, we think God should move based on our timetable. We believe Watch this, y'all better catch this. We believe because I'm praying for God to move. And because what I'm praying about is something that would help me have a closer walk with him, he should have answered by now. It's almost like we want to throw it back on him. Lord, I've been praying for you to bring me out of this addiction for years, and I still got this problem. Listen. God has a unique way of working things. I'm going to help you right here. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Watch this. Think about how long you've been dealing with what you've been dealing with. But you're still serving God. You're still attempting to do right. Now, you still got the issue. But you're still serving. I talked about amazing grace. You mean to tell me that you still got that same issue? But God still allows you to serve. God still allows you to wake up and see another day. You would think, listen, God would be fair. God, God would be fair because he's a holy God. To see that we still haven't gotten it right over here. Still choosing to do our own thing because when yes, we sin, that's a choice we make. Yes, sir. But even though we have chosen to go against his will, he still allow us to be here. He, he, he would be fair to cut us off. Yes, right. But I want you to look in your Bible and see where do we find a fair God. You will not find a fair God, but you will find a just God. You're not going to find a fair God. You will find a just God. And because of him him being a just God, a patient God, a loving God, even though we are still messed up, I heard somebody say that he looked beyond my faults and supplied my every need. This is the God that we serve. And we don't want to take grace for granted. Y'all should have came to Sunday school this morning. Listen, we we don't want to take his grace for granted because (laughs) there are times where we get into our minds Uh because God is gracious 
And because he is patient, yes. we'll just keep doing what we've been doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because when we ask for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive us yes. Yes. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh -huh. See how we'll try to lean on the word of God yes. to give excuses for our behavior. Yes, sir. But Paul said, should we continue, continue in sin so that grace may abound? Paul said, God forbid. Yes, sir. In other words, we don't keep on sinning because God is forgiving. Matter of fact, let me just bring it closer to home. As a husband or a wife, you're going to keep on mistreating your spouse and just keep saying, I'm sorry. One day they're going to get tired of that. You, you keep doing what you're doing but, and, and, and then come back apologize. But one day you're going to apologize from outside of the house. That's the, We have to keep in mind, listen, let us not take his grace for granted. The Lord has been good to us, and he has been kind. And we must understand that even though we have cut up, been disobedient, the Lord has continued to shower his grace upon all of us. He tells us, verse 19, go ye therefore. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Lord has commissioned every believer, every disciple. And a disciple is simply a follower of Christ. The Lord has commissioned us to go forward into this violent world and proclaim his name. The power that they witnessed when they were with him when he walked on water. The power that was displayed when they saw him defeat death and the grave. This power he gives to all believers. Yeah. Not just to have it, uh -huh. but to use it. Yeah. We have it to carry out the mission of leading others to the Lord. It is the work of the church yeah. to be carried out under the, not under our own strength, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but through the power of of the Holy Spirit who is alive in all of us. Every believer yeah. has been commissioned by the Lord yeah. mm -hmm. to go ye therefore. Yes, and church, listen, I understand God calls who he chooses. Mm -hmm. And I understand it is by God's divine providential plan uh -huh. who will be saved. But we have a responsibility yeah. as believers mm -hmm. uh -huh. to share the good news. Yeah. Listen, here's the truth. It's just a hard fact. There are some people who have never shared their faith with anybody. Yeah. It's just the truth. Some people say I'm shy. Some people I don't know what to say. Some people say I'm, I'm, I'm introverted. I'm, I don't really talk to people. Those are all excuses. Yeah. When we have the power of God in us. And if you think back over your, your life, think back over, matter of fact, think back over your past, this past week. There's someone you've crossed paths with you could have said something to about the Savior. And we've been charged to do this. It is not about building the church up. It's not about getting people into the pews on Sunday morning. There are people you will witness to that will never attend your church, but if you share your faith with them, they All may right. surrender their life to the Lord. All right. All right. And that's what matters. Yeah. Now, if the Lord sends them to the church, praise God. Amen. But as long as they get their soul saved, yeah. praise God. Yes, sir. That's why, at church, we, we had this discussion before. Listen, we may never fill the building up again. And I just believe, and several have said it, I believe God sent the pandemic to shake some things up about church. But we're doing church differently now. And that's fine. But the gospel is still going forward. And if you and I, it is not your pastor's job to preach and evangelize the whole city. As believers, it is our responsibility, every one of us, to share the good news. That's when I, when I talk about that amazing grace. Yeah. When you think about your life, listen, the Lord has done something for you that you ought to be able to tell someone about. And if we would do what 
Matthew's gospel is charging us to do, the words of the Lord. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That means that we should be sharing our faith with everyone. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we can be, we can be a, little, a little partial. Yeah. You know, black folks only want to witness to black folks. You know, some white folks only want to share the faith, faith with other white folks. Yeah. Listen, ain't nothing in here about race, creed, That's gender. It says, share your faith. Amen. It says, with all nations, Amen. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Listen, there was a time when we read the Great Commission every Sunday. We did that for a season to remind us that he gave us a charge and a, and a responsibility. Yeah. And we need to be reminded of what the master has told us we need to do. Right. Now, if you think about it, this, this charge could not have been only for those that were with Christ. Yeah. Because it would be impossible to reach the world right. with only those that were present with him. Amen. So as it turns out, the gospel was preached by those that were present with Christ. Yeah. And there were those that were converted. Right. And then they shared their faith. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then they shared their faith. Yeah. And they shared their faith. Yeah. And centuries have passed. Right. Christians simply sharing their faith. Somebody shared their faith with you and I. And at some point, we gave our heart to the Lord by somebody being obedient to verse 19. Verse 19 made it to our house because someone was obedient. And you and I, brothers and sisters, if the church is going to build up, if the kingdom is going to build up, we got to get bold and brave and not be ashamed of the gospel right. and tell others about Jesus Christ. Right. right here it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, yeah. even to the end of the world. Listen, when it talks about baptizing them in the name of the Father yeah. and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Yeah. So baptism is the identifying sign right. of an inward change. Now let me say this. I know we got some preteens and young people in the room and some possibly watching. Yeah. You don't get baptized to be saved. Yeah. A lot of young people will walk the aisle and say that they want to be baptized. But the child must understand, you don't get baptized to be saved. Yes, right. There's nothing in the water in this pool yes. that will do anything for your soul. That's it, right. That's right. Right. You come to be baptized not to be saved, but you get baptized because you are saved. All right. Baptism doesn't even come to place until you have already been saved. Yes. And the reason, watch this, and the reason some people... And, and God bless them, some people want to get baptized again. Uh, well, listen, uh, if you have been baptized and you've been backsliding, yeah. maybe even for years, what you simply need to do is repent of your sin right. and get right back into the fold. Yeah. Listen, if we, if, if, it, if, we had to, if it was about baptism and, Pastor, I need to get baptized again, listen, the pool would never be empty. Yeah. We would have to just line folks up and baptize every Sunday. Amen. Because people feel like we are backslidden, I've done wrong, I need to get yeah. baptized again. No. Understand the doctrine of repentance. Yeah. Go to God and ask for, for forgiveness. Yeah. And he's faithful and just to forgive you from all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Listen, I'm just about done. You know, sometimes preacher want a hoop, you know, but sometimes you just can't pull a hoop. You just got to go on and tell it like it is. Just go on, just go on and tell it like it is. But he, he said in verse 20, he said, teaching them. Now, church, y'all watch this. You know, I was, 
poking fun, you know, at some of y'all about Sunday school. Just, <laughs> but here's the thing. It says, teaching them. You cannot teach what you do not know. You cannot teach what you do not know. And if you will not attend Sunday school, if you will not attend Bible study, you don't have very much to share. You don't have very much to teach. Now, let me say this. Some were Sunday school students when they were teenagers. Well, you 50 now. The, the Sunday school lesson has yeah. been designed for certain ages. And if the last time you were in Sunday school yeah. was when you were 17 and you're 47 now, yeah. and you're sharing what you remember yeah. from Sunday school 30 years ago, yeah. well, that, that may help someone. Yeah. It just may. But you have missed so much teaching and instruction, it's time for you to get back into the Word of God. Right. Once again, what we talked about in Sunday school, when we get more of the Word in us, yeah. All right. that's how we're able to deal with what life hits us with. All right. A defeated Christian doesn't have a Bible that's been used very often. Yeah. But somebody whose Bible is almost tore up, uh, yeah, man. that person is likely not torn up. Spend time in the Word of God. Church, we cannot teach what we do not know. Spend time in the Word of God. We do not need to be afraid of what life is going to hit us with. Because it says in verse 20, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Listen, that's the sermon. He said it. He said, I am with you always. That means when you are in sorrow and when you are in pain, yeah. he's with you. Uh -huh. When you are suffering, yeah. when you're angry, yeah. he's with you. Yes, sir. When you're disappointed, yeah. when you feel dejected, uh -huh. rejected, yeah. he's with you. Yes, sir. When you don't have a dime to your name, yeah. he's with you. Yeah. When all your friends turn and walk away, He's with, He's with you. you. Even in those difficult times, yeah. when the husband walked out, yeah. he's still with you. Yeah. When the wife walked out, yes, sir. he's still with you. Yeah. When mama and daddy gone on to be with the yeah. Lord, yeah, man. he's still with you. Yeah. Yes, I don't care what life hits you with, the Lord will never leave you or forsake you. He says, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the world. God bless you and keep you as my. Pastor Cross made it so clear. He made it very clear. So I'm not going to add anything to it, but I'm just going to let you know that right now is the time. If you have not made Jesus Christ your choice, if you have not made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, after hearing this message, it ought to be something stirring on the inside of you to make you want to know more about him and hopefully to make him your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Doors of the church are open. You may come, thank you. You may come by letter, uh, Christian experience, prayer. got to learn how to take advantage of God's grace. Take advantage of God's grace.
be seated. See that none has come, but there's plenty of good room in my father's house. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap, play for the word on today. Amen. We thank God for another first Sunday. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to prepare our hearts and minds to take of the Lord's Supper. Amen. And we want to make sure everyone uh, has received their sacrament. If you have not, if you would raise your hand. Hey Amen. We've got a couple hands on this side as well. is coming. Uh, I'm going to ask Reverend Maurice Williams if he would come and say a prayer over our sacrament. Amen. Is there anyone else? Have we missed anyone? Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, Lord. First of all, Lord, just to say thank you. Father God, we come, Lord, just thanking you for who you are in our lives, Father God. Lord, we thank you for being God and for being God all by yourself, Father God. And Lord, we come right now, Father God, just, just thanking you, Father God, for what you allowed to happen one Friday evening, Father God, on a hill called Calvary, Father God. But Father God, we thank you even more, Father God, for what you allowed to take place that Sunday morning, Father God. And, Lord, we just thank you for what you did, Father God, because if you hadn't did it, Father God, we wouldn't be here today, Father God. And all these things, we just, we just thank you, Father God, <clears throat> and all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 At this time, let us all take, eat, and drink together. Amen. 
Amen. After they partook of the Lord's Supper, they sang a hymn and departed to the Mount of Olives. And you and I, we have our various destinations, so we will not give a benediction. Amen. Just tell you, just tell your neighbor that you love him with the love of Christ Jesus and consider yourselves dismissed. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. <laughs>